Hello guys and happy new year in the end of January. I've been a lazy boy, I've been a lazy boy. But I am back, at least with one video so far. Uh, we are looking at the SDG Guard, tier 8 Russian medium tank, playing on airfield again, just like in the last video that happened like a month ago, the last year. <laughs> Anyways, uh, playing on the airfield, we spawned on the left side, um, of uh, the east spawn, which kind of denies me to go where I usually like to go, which is that palm tree on the right there, that pocket, especially when there's RD. It's a really good position when you have high alpha guns like this one, uh, but since we spawned on the left, that kind of gets denied for me, at least, you know, like with any reasonable success, it's gonna be tough to get there. So we are going to the middle once again. This pre-aim is pretty much irrelevant, but uh, there's nothing really I can do that is much better than sit here and wait. Because we know there's a Centurion in the middle, so this time I won't get to uh, have the freebies uh, from the middle. And uh, just waiting. Just waiting for the game to double up, really. So this is 357 matchmaking, and as you see, if you look at the minimap, our batch it is AFK, which is... Probably the biggest flaw with 357. I don't got introduced. Most people were reasonably happy with it because, you know, there were less uh, games where you were shit on in lower tiers, like massively shit on. I mean, these days you get the tier 10 games almost all the time, but, you know, they're not so heavy you can uh, uh, pen half the stuff in the game most of the time, even when you're bottom tier. That didn't used to be the case, but the massive flaw with this matchmaking is that if one of your top tiers is AFK, if he's a terrible player, if he's a bot, if he's playing a garbage top tier tank, like for instance an IS-4 or something like that, uh, it creates kind of these completely unbalanced games that generally end up in complete whitewashes where, you know, it's 14-2, 15-1, something like that. That is very common uh, and uh, we're trying to make this not be one of those games, but it's already 0-4 and it doesn't look too well for us. And there's two autoloader heavies going on my side. I kind of want to shoot this guy because if he starts peeking me, then we're going to be in a bit more trouble. Because uh, this Type 5 probably will stay alive for a bit. I mean, with a 57 heavy and a 5120, that bit might be 30 seconds if these guys are good. But the 57 heavy is shooting HE. Uh, but uh, yeah, 5120 makes a barbecue out of the Type. Uh, so it's not looking too bright. We might be able to finish off the 57 before he reloads and... He's also not very smart. I mean, it's still better than having an AFK tier 10, but uh, not by much. HE shooting 57 heavies are not the most powerful tanks to be playing. And uh, he does get killed by uh, yeah, a VKB that is camping in uh, J0, I guess. That's a pretty, pretty incompetent player once uh, again playing a tier 9 heavy. Uh, so we gotta have to work around that. So the two auto letters die and we get a nice little lucky cheeky snapshot into this uh, RU. Uh, very nice for me once again. There's still T44 here somewhere, but the problem with this uh, tank and facing a hull down T44 is that there's not really much I can do about it. As uh, yeah, he's just gonna he's just gonna outplay me in hull down. So I'm not really gonna bother with that angle too much. We get a nice little snipe into the cupola of the T49 instead. Our team is still losing, not as badly as they were, but we are definitely still losing. Centurion Action X is still alive, that's also a very awkward tank for me to face. And, uh, yeah, I'm just trying to find better angles. I gotta be careful peeking so high up against that T44, but we can get some nice shots from here. I'm looking for the outline, but there was a rock in the way, but we still managed to get another shot on the T49, who will probably get a bit uncomfortable with me shooting him that much. And the T-44 gets spotted again. There's not really much of a chance for me to do much against him, but poking him a bit uh, to, you know, not let him breathe too easily is not a terrible idea. We don't really bother to aim that, as we didn't really expect to defend that whatsoever. So our north side is dying, but the Batcha woke up. Look at that. He woke up and he's almost dead already. Nice. If he wasn't such a terrible player. Even after he woke up, it would have been fine, but I assume that's some kind of a portal account and he just got tired of waiting of, uh, for his tank to be, you know, unlocked, so he actually loaded in and uh, killed himself. So that's a bit unfortunate. Maybe he just assumed that this game is unwinnable and threw his tank away doing one clip of damage. Maybe that was the case. Either way, terrible top tier player, 
uh, that, you know, kind of complements how bad their 57 heavy was as well. So I guess in this case, the tier 10s were actually somewhat balanced. Their 57 was shooting HE, the Betcha was AFK. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty even matchup there. So we have this full health WZ here, which is going to be a rough uh, tank for me to deal with. But first of all, we're going to snipe that T95 and the 704 might actually finish him off. And that is exactly what happens. So that's very nice. Uh, the T-44 is still alive, the Centurion is still alive, and the, of course that WZ, and let's not forget the shitter in the corner in this tier 10. Bachelorati, the 416 does some weird flanking, I didn't actually expect this at all, so I wasn't, uh, like, I got a bit disoriented when he got spotted on the minimap, but we do pick him up eventually. We also spot the WZ, who's making really questionable plays right now. I guess uh, he is balancing out that BKB who's sitting in uh, in J0. So we should have a pretty good fight here. It's a terrible position he is in. So as long as we should peak after he's been driving a bit, he should have a very hard time panning me or shoot even hitting me. And the 704 also nails a nice 920 roll into his side. Uh, we do pick up another shot and we are already at almost 5k damage without being shot once in this game, which is rather good, rather good. So WZ gets picked off, and now it looks like we're already winning. It looks like this game should be over. The 704 kills the Centurion, and then we can do whatever we want against this T44. Uh, another, like, you know, let's check if the 44 is not sleeping, but we're gonna fuck off. This is actually a pretty, pretty bad maneuver for me, as the 44 actually managed to peek over the ridge and shoot me. I didn't really expect that, so that was pretty poor play by me, but... Uh, in the end of the day, it's not that important to take one damaging shot. Hopefully, in the end, we won't regret that. So next up is this Centurion. I have no idea how good or bad he is. I haven't played against him yet, uh, and I don't know what he did in this game. But we do manage to bounce one of his shots, and we nail another very nice shot right into his track. A uh, bit pretty lucky with my shots. I'm pretty sure we're hit pretty much everything but that T44, which I didn't really expect to hit. And now... I will assume that the RD is reloading or will be focusing the 704, so I'm gonna play this angle while it is not RD safe. Um, I don't think I really have time to to waste to get into a position that is RD safe. And uh, talking about RNG, I'm pretty sure I jinxed myself and now two fucking terrible shots in a row. Uh, feels really bad to miss these kind of shots as, you know, the game is still very close and we know that our VKB is pretty much bot quality, so we can't rely on him to do anything. And the Centurion is also terrible, but my RNG is even worse now, so three shots in a row, complete misses, like probably 20% chance to miss each one of those shots, and I missed three in a row, so that feels pretty bad, but uh, the Centurion hasn't really been shooting me back either, and we might actually get him with one of these blind shots. Sadly, our tier 9 and 10 combo cannot deal with one T44. The tab 5 is the one getting RD, so the RD isn't actually focusing tier 8s in this game. We do pick up another damaging shot. No, the Centurion is a one shot. We really should try to get rid of him if we can. And it looks like he's running away, so we might be able to catch him. The 44 kills the Type 5 Heavy, so good good job to that 44, I suppose. He uh, did, you know, dismantled our tier 9s and 10s. And now we managed to deal with the Centurion. And it's a 2v2 where one of the one of our teammates is a bot and one of their... their Tanks left is an artillery player who should be reloading. I saw the type being stunned uh, and he missed another shot and those artists now have only three shots so worst case he still has only one left so I should try to be pushing now to find the information and find uh, the T44 and try to kill him. I should have slight hit point advantage on him and uh, I should be able to, to outplay him and this is perfect shot. All that terrible RNG against that Centurion pay in the end uh, comes back around and we get a really, really nice shot in the 44. And you can see that high alpha really dominating this kind of a fight behind hard cover. You can't really fuck with uh, me in that T44 too much. And now, you know, he's speaking. I know I don't have too much time for the Audi to reload, so I'm actually going to push the fight. And as long as I can, you know remain in some cover I should be fine the 44 is pushing but he's not gonna reload me twice so I have the next shot and he is on 32 hit points so we're gonna try to pick him up and a bit of a risky shot but he showed his roof so it would have been quite unlikely to bounce that and now it is all against Artie which means that this game's mostly over unless you know Artie gets lucky against me and then the bot is too stupid to deal with that but we'll see what happens 
But yeah, this game was oddly balanced, even though uh, we had an AFK tier 10, they had an HG shooting 57 heavy, they had that horrible WZ player, we have the bot in the VK. So, kind of weirdly, almost like a skill based matchmaking this one, uh, but uh, there's a lot of flaws with even thinking about skill based matchmaking just because of the bad tank balance in this game in general. Uh, you really don't want to see skill based matchmaking unless it's tank for tank basis, and then the matchmaking is going to take forever to find any games. Even if you only balance the top tier players around with their vehicles and their skill, it would take forever to find games. So, you know, there is that downside. But then again, maybe it is better to sit in the queue for added two or three minutes instead of uh, uh, playing these. 15-2 games that happens uh, happen all the time. Anyways, uh, Becciardi, I mean, I assume he's in the corner. I don't think he would have been able to cross the E0 uh, spot here that I'm right next to. I think I would have been able to spot him, but uh, it's uh, Gotta Gotta go 50 or whatever the speed is on that. I'm pretty sure this tank is actually slower than the Becciardi. So now I'm turning around to peek the corner, but turns out that he was across and he's already in the cap circle. Uh, our VK is already there, so he probably is gonna get this kill and we're gonna get uh, robbed the top gun But honestly at this point, I just want to win this game. I don't really care about uh, the top gun and that is exactly what happens All right, so here's the end plate ace tanker 5598 experience with the double two bonds high caliber and confederate 6875 damage done 136 assisted picked up five kills with 1866 base experience and after the repairs and resupply of ammunition, that game netted me a bit short of 150k. It was a really bizarre game just because uh, it was, our tier 10s were just all over the place. Some of our AFK, theirs were shooting HE, just absolute clown fiesta tier 10s and mostly the best players were playing tier 8s on our team and on the enemy one as well. So pretty odd matchup. Uh, but uh, quite a good game at the end of it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this replay cast and I'll see you on the next one.